So let's talk about plumbing up when it comes to margin fishing. Of course, there's many elements to consider how to feed your peg, at what time of the day to feed your peg, but more importantly, fishing in the correct depth of water and presenting your bait correctly is paramount in order to prevent what we'd call foul looking fish. With targeting down the margins, the bigger, the wiser fish that come in later on in the afternoon when they know there's a bit of bait going to be chucked in by the anglers when they're packing up. These are the clever fish, so everything has to be precise. Down the margins to my right here, I've got about 15 inches of water, but what I'm looking for with a plummet is a nice level area. You'll always, the problem with is we're fishing on the lining of the lake, so it's always going to be at an angle, but occasionally you'll find what we call a nice little plateau, and that's what I'm looking for. And luckily, in this peg, that's exactly what I've got, but I've only found it because I've spent time with my plummet. The biggest mistake you can make in any style of fishing when you're trying to figure out where the bottom is, what depth it is, the contours, the, the actual the substrate, the actual texture of the bottom, whether it's a soft or a hard bottom, is people rush. Take your time. The more time you take with plumbing up, the more you'll figure out and think and visualise what, what is actually going on underneath that water. So I've got a 4 by 14 rig quite an aggressive setup really because I'm targeting the bigger fish so I've got 021 aero slick silk main line all the way through to a 019 up length with a size 14 hook which bodes well with the baits what I'm going to be using which is bunches of maggots a couple of worm maybe even some sweet corn but generally it's going to be maggots I'm going to talk about the rig in a little bit more detail but it's the depth and finding the right depth which is first and foremost so let's have a look. Now I've actually plummeted up already to speed up that process, but it's the actual, how much line do you need to lay on the bottom? Gone in the days where you lie, lay six, eight inches of line on the bottom for margin fish, they've got cleverer, they've got wiser. They come into the peg, they might only spend a minute in your peg, even if you're lucky a minute, and then they'll move off out. And then you have to refeed, but you have to in that time, make sure that your presentation's right, so if a fish does take your bait, it registers on your bristle straight away and you hook it in the mouth correctly. So let's have a look down this margin here. Go on ducks, out that way. Now of course, make everything easy when you're plumbing up. When you wanna fish down the margins, don't fish too far down the bank. In the summertime, it's about making the fish come to you and it's your feeding. How you feed your peg is how you manage the fish. So I'm only fishing five meters down the bank because that enables me to visually see when the fish are there. But it also means I can loose feed bait by hand, I can loose feed by pot, but I'm in tune with my margin line. That's really important. So let's have a look. I've got my elbow on my joint. Always use a, a reference point on your pole, whether it's a bit of tape around the section or the section of your joint. You've got to have a reference point and also associate something on the bank side that you're going to put your float next to. So you're being dead accurate. If you find this little plateau that I've managed to find here, I want my bait to be in exactly the same place all the time. So my elbow is on the joint of the number four section. I'm just going to lower that down. Now, if you notice that I've actually seen a fish swirl there, it's, I've not actually fished it yet. I've been feeding it but there's loads of fish there. But if you notice when I'm plummeting up, how level that area, I'm just moving it maybe four or five inches to the left, four or five inches to the right. And then if I move it a bit further up here, it then goes up, it goes a little bit shallower there, you see. So I've got a lovely, lovely plateau. And I'm actually, as I'm plummeting up, I'm hitting fish because it's a right time of the day. I fed the peg the fish are looking for food, but where I've actually got the float set up. So when I plumb it up, I've just got the top of the body showing and the bristle. And that is to compensate for an arc in the line. I could fish dead depth where the bristle of the float, let's say, for example, let's just relax this line. If I was to plumb it up with a tight line and my float was like that, there's not enough security with my hook bait. So I'm using the length of the bristle of the float. Once that's actually sat in the water presenting with my hook bait on is like that. 
that means my hook bait is on the bottom and everything is nice and secure. That's going to minimise the actual hook bait moving around, dragging around, which is going to prevent foul hook fish. But it's giving my peg, my swim, my presentation that security. Of course, we're targeting big fish with big fins. And this is why I'm using a 4x14 rig, which in consideration, in comparison to the depth what I'm fishing, it's actually quite a heavy rig, but I want that security i want my rig to stay still when them fish are coming in so always spend time plumbing up and not just the area look at that not just the area i'm plumbing up feel around the contours so if i move further out here it drops off which is perfect you want that depth at the behind your float so to speak for the fish to feel safe and move into that shallow water so that is absolutely perfect now, if I was in a bit of a rush, I might go further down the bank and it plums up completely different. It's very uneven, as you can see, and it alters in depth massively. And all of a sudden it drops off. There's no level plateau. If I was to feed in that position, there's a very good chance that I'd miss bites, I'd foul up fish. Everything would be up in the air, literally up in the air. The bait would be getting wafted up in the air. The fish are coming into the peg shallower than the depth I'm fishing and that results in foul look fish which is an absolute no-no for uh, carp fishing on commercials at this time of the day at this time of the day you want to make every fish count so let's go back to the spot everything's nice and neat so all it's a case of now is bringing the pole back taking the plummet off and marking the depth of my rig on my actual top kit. Now, I'm using the, um, the Aero match kits, which are rated up to a 12, but the, the beauty about these top kits, because of the specific length, they are ultra, ultra stiff. So they bode well with really light elastics for your roach fishing on your canals and your rivers, right up to what I'm using it for, which is medium cart work. Uh, on commercial so I'm actually using a 12 rated elastic um, like I say quite an aggressive hook length and main line but I want to be confident with my setup and the beauty about these match kits they're so universal like what I've said right from light elastic work on your natural venues to your medium stroke heavy work on your commercials but because the top kits are really stiff all the elastic does all the work there's no stress in the carbon whatsoever if I was then going to be targeting the next size fish, the bigger commercial carp, the 8 to 12 pound bracket or even bigger, that's where I'm definitely going to get my power kits out because I want a heavier grade of elastic to marry with the hook that I'm using, the line that I'm using and the fish that I'm targeting. So there we go, plumbing up. Take your time when you plumb up. Make sure everything's in tune. You're completely in touch with where you're fishing and how you're going to feed that peg. And let me tell you, you're definitely going to catch loads more fish if you put more thought into plumbing up. Yeah.